Cody from Craftsrite emailed me about uh, testing some of his sawhorses and I said no way my testing machine isn't big enough or strong enough for sawhorses but he had something else in mind little sawhorses so these are what he sent me some folding ones he's made a video about these sawhorses some simpler ones more like my sawhorses although they don't have the gusset plate on them these ones which are the same ones but lower quality to break first just to make sure my apparatus works and these I-beam like ones, uh, I imagine these ones are probably the strongest ones. Now the pressure on my apparatus is on the bottom, so if I put a plate on here and then put the sawhorse on there, that actually be fairly unstable because as I push against here it might just kind of escape this way or that way because that jack can wobble a bit intentionally. So I think it makes more sense to just put the sawhorse in here upside down and push it from below. Now I was just thinking it would look better in a video if the sawhorse wasn't upside down, so if I just flip it like that, that would look much better but the numbers need to be upside down too, which they are because I just changed my software to show the number upside down as well I pretty much have to customize my test software for every test I run alright, ready to crush the first one that's a lot of weight on that sawhorse, 140 kilograms, 150 And it seems the beam is failing here, but that looks disappointing, so I think I'll change the code to test until it's completely broke. There we go. Ultimate fail strength was 161 kilograms, and that is 1 over 7.5 scale, which means this should be about 1 7.5 squared. So basically multiply that by 7.5 squared, and we get... 9,000. Uh, so if I scale that up, that should hold potentially 9 tons, which actually doesn't really surprise me that much. Now what makes sawhorses so strong is when you push down on here, these legs kind of push into the floor and they don't actually slide out so easily. So basically the floor and the legs form this triangle here, and then you're just limited by the strength of this beam here. So for my next test, I'll be a little bit sneaky, and I'll put the sawhorse on a slippery surface. I thought for sure the legs would slide out on this, but they didn't. You can actually see the marks from the legs here, here, and here. So I guess at high pressure that paint became a lot less slippery. But if at first it doesn't fail, try, try, try again. This time, stainless steel. And those legs are definitely cracking. Uh, you can see that glue joint has failed there. So definitely leg sliding out much less strength that way. Just 18.5 kilograms this time. Except for letting the legs slide out on one of these, I actually got pretty consistent strength on these three. Well, that was a disappointing failure mode. Now of the I-beam ones, this one's had the highest fail strength, even though I put it on the uh, slippery stainless steel. But I guess these things across here, these ties were more than enough to make up for the stainless steel, so... It was once again the beam that failed. And finally testing Cody's folding design. First test is on a stable surface. Well, both of these failed at rather low forces, and it seems to be because the beam at the top is breaking, the rest of the structure is still fine. So I made a new replacement top beam out of hardwood so I can break these again. So on a slippery surface, that string on the bottom just kept stretching and stretching and stretching, and it was at 17 kilograms for quite a bit of its range. This is actually still pretty intact, except for the string being stretched. So I may break it again. Yep, 
And even with a stronger beam, it was the beam that broke. The rest of this frame is undamaged. I still want to crush the actual frame of one of these, so for this one I made a much stronger top beam. I stopped this test because the legs are starting to slide out, so that's a known failure mode. So I'm going to put this on sandpaper so that doesn't happen. That went to pieces. Now the highest fail strength was this one at 168 kilograms. But most of the I-beam ones actually failed at much lower forces with the I-beam just kind of disintegrating. The strongest consistently were this simple design like this one here. Although this one failed at a very low force because I put it on a slippery surface. So this kind of basic sawhorse design seems to be consistently the best. Which is good because that's also my favorite design of sawhorses. Well, those were fun to test, so thank you Cody from Craft Fright Workshop for sending me those sawhorses. You can see his video about building those sawhorses here, and my video about my style of sawhorses here.